Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Reforms are starting to gain traction in the rail and port sectors, while Transit continues with its own turnaround efforts. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss these developments. Hi Terence. Hi Sinal. What are some of the key reforms being pursued in the rail and port sectors? Well the main reform is about getting private sector participation into these sectors. So a bit like uh, in the electricity sector where we see an unbundling process un underway with the generation, transmission and distribution businesses being vertically separated. That's the key as well to unlocking private sector participation in ports and rail. Now this has really been government policy for many years in the port sector. So we've really had the separation between the National Ports Authority and the TPT, which is the terminal operator, and there are a number of private participants at the port level, at terminal level. Um, in the rail sector, this is new. So there's a vertical separation underway between what would be the rail business, the infrastructure business, or the infrastructure manager, and the Transnet operations. Transnet is still the monopoly operator. Uh, there's a couple of very small uh, private operators, but they are, on the freight logistics side, the major um, player in that, in that sector. And this, this reform is about levelling the playing field, so um, letting people, other operators have access to the rail network. So that's really the overarching thing is, you know, Transnet's balance sheet and operational performance has, has weakened massively over the last number of years and really intensified post-COVID. And remedying that, is, it's not going to be enough to use that balance sheet and the skills within Transnet and the operational capacity within Transnet to get rail moving and ports moving again and therefore the reforms are all about bringing in the private sector. A rail network statement has been released and some concerns have already been raised. Yes, so in this vertical separation process uh, there's a sort of a governing document, this is this network statement that is going to explain how rail operators can access the network and at what rates they need to pay for that network. And so uh, this has been a long awaited document. While it's happened quite quickly, in fact, if you re relative to what we've seen in the electricity sector, where we've seen this very slow uh, restructuring process over the number of years, with the collapse of Transnet and with the setting up of the National Logistics Crisis Committee, these, some of these uh, interventions have happened at quite uh, amazing speed, but they are now starting to actually the del deliver in terms of the, the, the architecture that is, is starting to come out into the public domain. And this network statement is a key governing document for this future where you have a, a state-owned infrastructure manager and then you have uh, multiple participants on the rail and they need to have clear rules of the game and they need to have a clear tariff methodology for accessing that network. Um, so that has been released for public comment and there's a new regulator, it's an interim regulator that's going to have public hearings around that. And I think it's going to be quite an active public hearing process because the initial comments, particularly around the tariff methodology, are very cool. In fact, uh, the, feeling, the feeling out there is that this is too expensive, uh, particularly given the state of the network and uh, it's going to be an interesting discussion because there's no doubt that the state of the network requires massive investments. I mean, the backlog is estimated at around 30 billion in terms of maintenance backlog on the rail network itself. So, and, and for private operators to be on that network, they need that to be reliable. And we know that's not, that we know about the cable theft, we know, know about lots of derailments that have happened, but also the actual infrastructure, the signaling, the actual um, rail, there's, there's issues around that, so there's a massive investment backlog and need, and that has to be funded. But whether this tariff methodology, which looks, <laughs> in fact, it resembles exactly the methodology that we know very well in the electricity sector, that NERSA has those general public hearings around, you know, it's um, basically a, an allowable revenue methodology. But whether that is appropriate for this uh, stage is not clear, and I think that will be debated heavily. And then also, whether you can expect uh, private operators to come in on a rail network that's not reliable and they're not really trustworthy or, or trusting of whether the state can actually fix the rail state, uh, the, the state of the network, you know, there's also a big call for an acceleration of concessioning 
parts of, of the network so that the private sector can maybe take responsibility, not ownership, but will invest and have a concession for a period over a portion of the network um, so that, that there's a reliability factor. But that also, well, there's a cost factor there and that uh, private participant will also have to recover. So it's a, it's a big issue and it could be the key constraint uh, to actually realising this reform. But we'll have to see how it plays out at these public hearings and what the eventual tariff methodology and network statement looks like. In parallel, Transnet is pushing ahead with its own recovery plan. Yes, so uh, we see some pu private sector participation also happening on the Transnet level and there have been very interesting developments around the ports. We know that the Durban Container Terminal has got this Filipino um, preferred bidder who is now following a due diligence uh, period which took very much longer than I think anyone suspected. They are now the selected bidder, the official bidder. Um, and it's, it's about now getting that to financial close, I think, and we'll have to see what happens in the coming months, as well as we're seeing a lot of uh, land lease deals, new terminals being put out to tender, liquefied natural gas, but many others. Um, so there's a lot of action around the ports, um, but that's only a portion of the recovery plan. That's almost the non-transnet portion, although they're managing those, those sort of uh, those concessions at the port or those at, at, the, at the terminals and really at the, the core business um, it was looking like it going to be a very dismal year this 2023 2024 and it was a dismal year I mean we know about how it fell off a cliff since COVID over I think we used to rail over 260 million tons before COVID the last financial year it was 149 million tons and before the recovery plan was announced, I think around October, uh, it was looking like it was going to dip down to 142 million tonnes. Uh, the new CEO has come in, the new finance team, the new uh, CEO of Transnet Freight Rail, and there's been a lot of energy and a lot of help from the private sector through the NLCC. And uh, it looks like they are starting to show recovery, and it looks like they will, instead of being another dip, uh, down into uh, to negative volumes for 2023-24, which would have would have ended at the end of Mar or it ends at the end of March. It looks like that it could actually rise from that that horrific level of last year. Nothing to write home about, but it's still a recovery, and I think a start of something to come, a, a much better recovery to come. There's a much greater openness amongst the current Transnet executive team to the assistance that they're getting from the private sector and to the partnerships that are going to be required to eventually revive things. So it's early days, but I think around 150 million tonnes to 154 million tonnes at a very aspirational level, although that's unlikely, but it, it looks it's far better than the, the forecasts of uh, sort of September, October last year of 142 million tonnes. So it's a modest recovery, but a recovery nonetheless and something that should be recognised and celebrated. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.